I think it's gonna be a super simple job. Add in some like boulder retaining. Maybe you put 10 plants in here and this place will look 10 times better. <laughs> The client doesn't really know what they want for this yard, but I can visualize pretty quickly what might make this look nice. And I think if we keep it simple and do a few select plants, like showy plants, and then use like a rock border, and then maybe a couple other flowering plants, something simple. What I don't love about this yard is this little retaining wall. One, because it doesn't really match the other elements in the yard. We have rocks that I think do fit. The brick obviously is set in, and then stucco. And this just looks like an additional material. It also doesn't really need to be there, so I want to get rid of this extra little retaining area. The lantana over there, it's doing great, and I would like to keep it, but um, it depends on how we want to grade the yard. I think I could grade it in a way that I keep it high up there to keep where the root ball is level, where it is now, and then just kind of retain it and get rid of this space here. So I'm going to take my plans, I'm going to draft them in AutoCAD so that way I can get the square footage of mulch and any other materials, rocks, and plants, and at a push of a button, I can uh, start working on a quote for them. Uh, I know they're not gonna wanna spend a lot of money, so I'll be conservative in material choices and planting sizes. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's not beautiful, but it's a start. And hopefully it'll be beautiful when we're done. I work on small residential projects, which is a lot more intimate and working directly with the client. The budgets are usually limited, uh, sometimes not always, but it's very different than if I was to work for a firm and do big outdoor projects. You have to get involved with the government and all these regulations. There's still re regulations in residential, but in my opinion, you can get a lot more creative and I feel like I'm making a lot more of a direct impact on people's lives on a daily. I affect where they live and that affects how they feel about their space. When I was in college, my goal was to become a landscape architect and it was a tough time in the economy when I graduated, not a lot of us got jobs in the field. I ended up working for a design build company doing residential design and I really didn't want to do residential, I wanted to do parks and plazas and large buildings, um, the exteriors. And I was a little disappointed that I got stuck in residential, but at the same time it really opened this, these doors for me to be able to do what I'm doing now, which I absolutely love. So they sell all these uh, flagstone pieces by, uh, well, the flat is what I call them. That's what you put plants in, uh, by the pallet. That's the official term. They sell them by the pallet. And so you kind of get what you get with them. I usually like to get the big pieces, like one to two footers, but you also get smaller things mixed in. So you need to be able to piece them together, almost like a puzzle to make them look good. And uh, sometimes you chisel them or cut them so they kind of fit with each other. I like to have the grout spaces between them if it's dry set, like one to three inches max. Well, I got distracted, this isn't DG, but I wanna do something like this for a client. And I would suggest that we just buy either half a pallet, probably, because it's a small area. So we would set these stones on top of a decomposed granite, and then we'll just fit them in and do that grout space, like one to two, one to three inches or so. So it's kind of informal. I do like this color. It doesn't say uh, what it is. Platinum gold, maybe that's it. Yeah, platinum gold. Yeah, I think I like this. It has a nice little shine to it too. It picks up the sun. So for that client, this is a different client now. Um, let's see. How many clients do you normally are working on? Like, how many projects are you working on like all at once? Or does it get kind of hectic when you do come with like multiple ideas and multiple visions and like which one is yeah. which? I lose momentum very quickly if I don't get from meeting the client to talking about what they want into the design process. So I try not to have more than like three or five projects open at a time. Because if I go and meet all these people and don't get to the creative part of it, I start losing that, um, a lot of that content. I have to like almost start from the beginning to go back to it. So three to five is like good for me. So this is 
platinum gold patio. Another random thing is this is about an inch thick or so, which is fine for dry setting. The thinner stuff like this, you would stick on top of, of thinner like this, you'd stick on top of concrete and thin set it on, mortar it on. But since I'm dry setting, I want the big guys because these don't move as much. So that would be called patio. So that's too small of a sample, but. Take this for now. So now I want to pick a decomposed granite that goes with the stone. Uh, Desert Gold's kind of the standard one. I actually like it, it's popular. So this is stabilized, which means it has some sort of. Um, I don't know what the adhesive is. It's, it's a loose adhesive, but basically when they wet it down and compact it, it sticks together a lot more than just uh, the regular decomposed granite. Yeah, that's, that's a nice mix. You know, pretty, pretty straightforward. Or I could do grays. This is kind of cute. That's quite the contrast. I don't think I like it for this project, but I do like this. Plaster sand, no thanks. Um, I'm gonna just suggest desert gold. They have like a bunch of different ones too that we can do, but why reinvent the wheel if it looks good, you know? Okay. So pretty much here they just sell stones. I'm gonna need some bricks for this project so I'll have to go uh, somewhere else for that. But I mean, they have so many different options in terms of types of stones. And I really like Southwest Boulder because they know so much about the stones and where they came from, which I always find really interesting. Typically the closer that a stone is from where it's been extracted, uh, it's usually more affordable unless it's something rare. But like Pennsylvania Bluestone, it really comes out of New York and Pennsylvania. When they ship it out here, it's going to be a lot more than say if you use our like local high desert gold or something like that. So I started out with just designing, just pen on paper, getting people's plans, putting together the layouts. And then I started going out to the field and help laying out plants. And eventually I got my contractor's license, which was super exciting for me because you went from designing to actually implementing. And there's so many things to be learned from the implementation process that I really think it helped my design process in terms of how I want to put things together, what makes sense in construction. Uh, so I think being able to being able to have the license to allow me to build legally <laughs> um, really opened up a lot of doors for me and I love that creative process because the hands-on is I think where I really learn and makes me just a better designer. So a typical day of work varies so much for me. I At this point I would just call myself an entrepreneur because I feel like my hands are in so many different buckets. So there's Sarita Landscape Design which is my local design build company where I'm mostly doing design right now because I'm traveling so much. Then there's the media side where I travel for home shows or I travel for media gigs or television shows. So a typical day of filming is you wake up probably 6 a.m. or so, you get there by 7. You usually work in between a 10 to 12 hour day and then you go home, eat dinner, fall asleep and do it again. <laughs> um, so there's not a lot of like play time per se and it's quite exhausting. Um, because you're yourself, but you're also like an elevated version of yourself. You really got to output energy because a lot of it dies off by the time it reaches the camera. So like this is me normally, but if I was doing a show, I would be like, hey, like this is me normally. <laughs> so it's a little more of an energy output um, and also to make it feel natural. It's kind of like a huh, figuring that out. Now a day in my life at Serena Landscape Design in San Diego is a little bit different. I, I'll usually work out in the morning 
get to my computer, start answering emails, uh, get to design work and nail that out. Sometimes I'm just doing computer work all day long and then sometimes I'm in the field like half the day depending on if we have jobs in construction or not. And then the whole social media stuff, I just, just try and squeeze it in between. <laughs> yeah, because I want to make sure that I can get it in a minute, get the content as well as like the audio will go, but show people the actual like flowers and stuff like that. So. They kind of smell right now, but they really smell good in the evening. Okay, so this is good enough lighting about the plant anyway. Alright guys, the next plant I want to talk about is called Brugmansia or Angel's Trumpet. It's so beautiful. Let me show you right here. So this is a small uh, shrub slash tree. It has these beautiful pendulous flowers. It's probably my favorite part. It's called Angel's Trumpet. Why? Because look at its trumpets. <laughs> uh, they have these pendulous flowers that my favorite part about them is that they smell amazing, especially in the evening. Um, and that's because what pollinates these guys are fuzzy little moths. Isn't that cool? So you'll notice if you walk by in the evening, you'll catch the smell of this plant and it's so pleasant. But between the looks of it and the smell of it, it's a great shrub. However, it's very toxic, so you don't want to ingest any part of it. It can cause hallucinations and it can make you very sick, especially the seeds, so don't do it. Um, but the sad thing about this plant is that it's native to South America and of all the seven varieties, are extinct in their natural habitat, but luckily we have nurseries and so this plant can live on. 55 seconds. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't like the energy as much on that one, so I might just do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I'll give one more take. So I got everything in there, but now I want to... It felt forced, so I want it to be more conversational. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> you think I'm done? <laughs> If people are interested, there and just go. like that, in the time it takes to do a television segment, and then I'll screw these eyes. Ah, it's it's so almost done. done. <laughs> Eric, oh sweet to the pros. She's breaking my heart. Oh my gosh. All right. That's, see, this is why I think Pinterest failed. Let the glue dry. <laughs> everyone wants to be famous nowadays right and like I'm not gonna lie I enjoy I wouldn't call myself famous but I enjoy the spotlight I, I would say I was shyer when I was younger but I've always been an extrovert it was more that I was like shy to express maybe things that I needed um, but for anybody that's wanting to get into media like how do you differentiate yourself um, it's way more about being like typical TV pretty and like all that like put togetherness. I think nowadays people want to see real people that are just super interested in what they're sharing. So my advice to somebody that wants to be in media is find your niche, find something that you have a passion for. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter if you like stutter through it. If you have a passion for it, people love to watch that. We put in about a foot at a time and then stomped it down. It's kind of like a grape stomp, really. Uh, you just want to compact it a little bit and then you add another foot and another foot. And that way, it's not after the first rain, you get it to drop like six inches, which would just look sloppy and the plants wouldn't be as happy. So you want to compact the soil as you put it in. I feel super fortunate that I've been able to work in television. It wasn't really my goal initially. I kind of fell into it. And now that I'm doing media, it's so much fun for me. It's a lot of work and it's hard on your personal schedule, but it feels so rewarding to be able to share something that you're passionate about with other people and on such a large platform. I say let's keep them. They're bold. We'll go ahead and transplant them somewhere else and they'll have a happy life. We really tore this yard up, but that's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm ready to get out there and start working. I think it benefited me not to have camera experience to actually get casted for this role in I Hate My Yard because they were looking for real landscape experts. And I think if I had been too uh, hosty, I would have been too much like the competition in a way. I, it, it was a nationwide casting call and I know that they had a bunch of different actors and different people trying to go for it, but ultimately at the end of the day I would say I got it because I was passionate about the subject and I actually had some credentials to back it up. And um, I enjoyed talking about it and I think that comes across on camera and that's what people want to see. You can be as polished as you can be polished, but if you're not passionate about it, you might as well just be watching anybody else. So. <laughs> I would just say I'm kind of a passionate person in general, but I definitely feel like I thrive on the creative aspects in life. So in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew I was paying for college, so I went to community college to figure out 
what direction I kind of wanted to put my energies. And I came across landscape architecture when I found that I immediately became passionate about it because it combines being outside with science as well as a creative way. And in, in my eyes, I build permanent art in ways. I mean, it's immobile, it moves, it's plants, but hardscape and all that coming together, it's, uh, it's art to me. For me right now, I think it's hard to say like where I'm going to go. I like being in the media. I don't have to be in the media. I think I'd be happy doing residential design locally too. I do love sharing on a large platform. So for me, I would like to continue on in the media to continue that. I like to set big goals and if I get halfway there, I'm excited. At least a direction to follow. So <laughs> I, uh, I jokingly say like I want to be the uh, Rachel Ray of landscaping, right? So that's the giant goal. Whether I get there, who really knows, right? But if I even get a quarter of the way there, I would feel fairly accomplished in um, just being able to spread the profession, yeah.